Woo folks, bro. Oh man, you know, I, I I told this gentleman earlier how much I'm actually a fan of his because I um there's been so many movies that this guy has been in from Mortal Kombat to Blade to Kickboxer 3. I'm a big martial arts fan, and so just seeing all the stuff that he's been in, uh, it's it's really cool to have him on the show. Uh, you've seen him stand across guys like Steven Seagal, Wesley Snipes, um, you know, to just name a few. And if you go online, you'll see a lot of if you look up Sid Liu Fao, you look up a lot of the other movies and TV shows that he's been on and whatnot. He was actually um, in a, a church video with my niece as well, too. You were in a for, for the Book of Mormon. I, I saw that one as well, too. Uh, you were in there as well. And so, yeah, I'm I'm kind of uh, excited right now. So I'm going to be quiet <laughs> and let my man do the rest of the talking because he's truly the star. So, folks, we're very lucky to have a gentleman who's very busy. And thank you so much to see Louis Fowl. Brother, if you could please go ahead and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and introduce yourself. Thank you, man. Well, first of all, I just want to say what an honor it is uh, with uh, Brother Gavin Wong. Uh, what a nice introduction. <clears throat> Checks in the mail. <clears throat> Such. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's yeah. how it is. And uh, being able to uh, to plug some of those, uh, those film projects. Uh, but now... Um, just kind of giving you a little history. Uh, my name again, uh, I'm Sid. I go by Sid, but uh, it's Sydney C C E Liu Fao. And I uh, I was born in Hawaii and Kahuku, and uh, I've pretty much been raised up in uh, Orange County, California, and uh, Santa Ana, Garden Grove. Um, uh, in those areas, then I moved uh, to uh, Florida, where I worked for Disneyland um, in Anaheim, as well as in uh, Orlando for for ten years. I guess that kind of got my entertainment uh, queries uh, um, going because uh, I also uh, used to go to PCC and um, meet up there with uh, with a lot of uh, you know Ainga or, or Ohana. And uh, we go do uh, different shows uh, from time to time, and I'm talking about the the, the Fiso sisters, uh, Tolo, Tofi, and uh, and Oli. And uh, so, what a great uh, experience that I was uh, involved in in doing Polynesian entertainment. Um, I got my first start uh, with uh, Aurora Kaava, um, who was uh, Miss Hawaii. Um, and she had a uh, Polynesian dance production. Uh, and then I got to dance with uh, different uh, production groups. Um, also from uh, PCC at one point in time was uh, Alex uh, Tukurio uh, with uh, Tahiti Otera and uh, Auntie Linda Wishard uh, with uh, Te Fanao. Um, and, uh, you know, I, there's just so much. Uh, preparation that our culture does uh, when it comes to entertainment. So it's not uh, it's not a far stretch when you get involved in any other type of entertainment. Um, as I um, as you alluded to, uh, I got involved um, because of my background being involved in martial arts for uh, now over what forty years. But uh, Lima Lama, the Polynesian art of self defense. Uh, created uh, by Uncle Tina Tualesenga. And um, I uh, was uh, under Lima Lama for the longest time. And and I guess I got my shot there because of the films and the television, uh, because our background. And as you know, uh, I don't have to say much about being Polynesian from the islands when they look at your size and then uh, even more so how fast and uh, flexible and nimble uh, you are when you're running to the buffet table. So, <laughs> yeah, they saw that too. So, um, but yeah, so uh, my uh, my start in the uh, from Disney went to uh, into acting uh, when I was in Orlando, and it's actually a little bit uh, funny because I've been involved in the Polynesian entertainment. And in 93, I was told by our manager, like, are, are you angry? And I'm like, 
why do you say that? I'm on the stage dancing. He goes, yeah, but you look angry. And I go, well, I, I do take after my mom. So, <laughs> and, and it's like, no, I mean, serious. It's like, uh, you look like you got a lot on your mind and you're, you know, you're kind of. Um, so anyways, what that did was that that kind of opened the door into uh, being able uh, to get into acting, uh, not intentionally, um, but in acting, they do these type of exercises to where you become familiar with the muscles and your face and your body uh, posturing. And so uh, your smile, you know, you do what's called the mirror. And uh, I realized I know what they're talking about because the person that was mirroring me had a grouchy face. <laughs> and I'm like, what's wrong with your face? And they were doing everything that I was doing, you know. And I was just like, okay, I see. So I got to change my look. I got to remember, you know, the the muscles uh, in my face. And when I'm like smiling and, and actually feeling, um, you know, happy being on stage and, and uh, sharing our uh, songs and dances, our mana'o of the culture. And uh, that kind of changed everything because when I got into the acting aspect of it, um, I remember that uh, I was approached by one of the actors uh, who was a stunt coordinator and asked me if I was interested in getting into stunts. And I'm like, and this is like 10 years already that I've been with uh, Disneyland and Disney World as a, as a, as a whole for the Disney company. And I'm like, you know, I could use challenges because I'm not the kind of person that kind of sits on my laurels and, and think, you know what? I, I got it made here. Now I'm good. For me, I was always looking for, for opportunities. And, uh, and I, I will tell you a little bit more about that. And, you know, well, I, I just say it now. So um, getting into the film industry, you know, you're going to meet so many people that have a negative view of you. And you're trying to get involved in a profession and you're being bad. You know, I don't want to say bad mouth, but you're, you're, you're being persuaded to why waste time? You know, why are you wasting your time? You know, there's no islanders there's no polynesians that have acting roles there's there's uh you know there's there's always the guys that play the bad guys and you'll probably be the guy that plays the bad guy and i'm like um okay but i'm not going to get to play a bad guy unless i start to learn the trait and so with all the uh persuasions of you know prevention negativity um and listen you're 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 not equipped with uh with the tools um or you don't have the talent you, you don't have it um that has to go away because you got to be like what you did you know you created your own platform and uh and you went for it because you have that much faith in yourself that you can do it and you know that you can do it and that's what i did i'm like you know i'm not going to listen to anybody else who's never been down this path before so yeah maybe they can do it and maybe the negativity is because you know they haven't seen anybody but guess what i kind of visualize that there's going to come a day where i'm going to actually get to act or, or you know uh be a bad guy or or be a heavy or or, or be a, a cop or a doctor. Um, you know, there was so much closed doors during my time of, of when I started. Um, as a matter of fact, there was only uh, two Polynesians that were working in the film industry at that at the time that I joined. And this was in 80, 87. And uh, that was uh, Al Harrington, and also uh, that time was uh, Pete Tuyasosopo. And those were the only two at that time that, that I knew of um, on the acting side. But then I learned that on the 
stunt side, which I got involved with as well, that there was a Bob Minor, I uh, sorry, Bob Apisa, sorry, Bob Apisa. Um, and a lot of see Bob Apisa and who else was I going to say, and also um, Norm Norman uh, Compton. And uh, Norman was the first double for Dwayne, uh, you know, uh, Johnson, so DJ. And so uh, there was a lot that was going on in that period when DJ got involved. Um, Because he kind of opened the doors. um, And I will say that, uh, wow, here goes a guy that got into the, the profession and he just fell on the mountain. How do you fall on the mountain, man? That's that was like really crazy. But you know what? Um, I'm glad that he did, and I'm glad that he did good with it. And and I supported him, and and I'm happy for him. I'm happy for his family. Um, and then obviously, you know, we know the, his lineage and um, and posterity. And I kind of share some stuff later in our conversation about that. Um, but yeah, so that. That getting involved in that uh, started doing commercials, started getting in, in uh, B rated movies, um, you know, no, no, no triple X movies, no. <laughs> um, but I will say that um, the opportunity as an actor, um, as a as a Polynesian, was always there to. Uh, to cross the line. And I'm so grateful that uh, I wasn't one of those persons. I think you may have heard me say things that probably um, uh, won't ever get me to talk in church. (laughs) Um, But, you know, I'm okay. I'm okay with that because as a, as a thespian, uh, as an actor, um, you want to, you know, the art of acting is, not to not to act you know it's it's something you just got to believe in and and uh i'm not always wearing my my sunday church clothes and so there's a lot of times i will tell you that i'm I'm not perfect and and i kind of and i and i lose my cool and you know words escape my my mouth that i know that probably i shouldn't say um and it's one of those natural things that came to me as i'm talking um and i said it purposely in the native tongue and try to make it very short to the point. And, you know, I, uh, I had a lot of other, uh, Polly's, uh, Samoans, especially like, Sonny, if come a lay, my five, you know, cook out Samoa. And I'm like, uh, okay. That's it. I don't know how to say those words, <laughs> but in, 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 uh, in, getting to the point that you know i became the first person to actually say something from one samoan to another um and so i kind of i i used that angle even though it's like i wish it could have been a better one uh i like to start thinking a little bit ahead of the curve of all right so let's talk about how we can, as Polynesians, from Samoans, Tongans, Hawaiians, uh, um, Tahitians, you know, Maoris, Fijians, um, just just go down the spectrum of all these different islands, uh, New Wave, um, and you know, like you you see the movie Rapa Nui, right? So you in the cook islands and and then you see all these these uh cook islanders that were actually being casted for a lot of the background roles but all the main roles were not among any of the polys and you have to ask yourself well why 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 is that and we being from the islands are very confident in our entertainment we're confident in our abilities to perform and to entertain, to sing, to dance, um, and to tell stories. And I find it, I, you know, I, I find it a 
well, should I say I found it in, in, in my path, um, a struggle to be recognized because I was always considered, you know, hey, he's a Mexican, you know, he's black, uh, he's uh, Japanese, he's Chinese, he's Vietnamese, he's, he's Filipino. And so with any of these other different ethnicities, um, I was always cast at somebody else. And as long as SAG allowed that to happen, it was it's basically called light for light. So if you can pass for it and there's not another um, individual that they can contact that can fit that role and who's a SAG, you know, member, um, then they have a right to to basically uh, state their case. And so there's a, there was a many, many roles for me to, to do that because, um, you know, Samoans were probably um, the last of the few that were even mentioned um, and Tongans were never mentioned. Any other, any other uh, Polynesian groups were, were never mentioned except Hawaiians, because Hawaiians are probably more notable of all the Polynesian islands um, to Hollywood, and and not that it's a you know a stereotype, but I I will say that I I, I do find it uh, you know a little bit um, questionable as to when you're talking about diversity, and yet you're you're not fighting for the uh, the light for light, the people that actually are of a specific race, um, you know, playing these roles. And then it came down to, um, you know, when I worked on, uh, as an example, I, I, I shot a TV pilot in, uh, in Hawaii in 97. It was called Honolulu Crew, CRU, Crime Reduction Unit, where I was... Uh, slated if it got picked up as one of the regular cops and i uh i guess that was kind of like my first experiences um as a islander being treated um differently because they brought me in from la but you know when the people who are not like the producers everybody else they just look at you as, oh, you're an islander. So you know what? Uh, hey, uh, you're not supposed to be over here eating off of this truck. You got to go back to the other truck over there, um, you know, that long line where the other extras are. And um, not that I have an issue with being prideful on that. I had an issue with the fact that they still don't want to recognize that, oh, oh, uh, sir, uh, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't know who you were. And my point is, don't treat other people just because you think they belong, you know, with a group that you're now like, you're not as important to, you know, as these people are, um, because you don't know. And I, I think the whole perspective that I had with, with, uh, with who I am and my character of being able to treat everybody the same, you know, with, uh, with love and with respect. And, you know, we, we give what they give. And I, um, I've worked with people that were just so condescending, you know, Oh, you're just, uh, and then it came down to, Oh, you're just a day player. And I'm like, Oh, wow. Well, soon we forget. There was a time where you were a day player too. And there may be a time where you may not be working and you'll be going after day player jobs. So let's kind of humble ourselves because we just never know. Um, but anyway, that's, uh, that, that's kind of been my experience that, uh, that I have something uh, huge that I'd love to uh, present and, and share with you. Um, and my you know, I, I guess I'm going on 30 years um, in the film industry. Um, but in my first 20 and uh, starting in, in uh, 
99, um, Dwayne DJ got involved and uh, he, he, uh, he started, you know, with all the small kind of stuff, uh, not too many, but I do, I do remember one had to do with Star Trek. Um, one of the, uh, I think it was Voyager. Um, and then his character as the Scorpion King on the Mummy 2. And then the following year, the Scorpion King has its own movie. I'm like, what? So I get a call um, if I would not, uh, if I wouldn't mind doubling uh, DJ um, from the uh, stunt coordinator. And this was in, uh, in, in 99 when he was actually working and I think they were filming in uh, England and in, uh, in Morocco. And so my point is ever since 2000, all the way to, I don't know, I want to say maybe 2010, maybe 15 at the latest, I was being mistaken. I was being identified and I was being compared to DJ. And I, you know, first of all, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm honored. Number one, that, uh, people think that I, at that time that I was DJ and, uh, and I'm serious. And I'm, I'm, I'm like, I have as an experience, um, I was over at a place in, in, in the uh, Mandalay Bay here in Las Vegas, um, where I reside. And it was a, and it was in a, a, a nightclub that was a food place turns into a nightclub called Rum Jungle. And there was a big event going on. And, um, the CEO of Red Bull at the time walked in, he saw me walked right up and he goes, Oh uh, man, Mr. Johnson, I w big pleasure. He goes, let me introduce myself. And he handed me his card and he goes, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm the executive uh, vice president for the uh, Red Bull. And uh, I hope you don't mind uh, me being able to approach you. And I don't know if I need to talk to your agent or what, but I just like to throw this out that uh, we have $2 million. If you don't mind being a spokesperson for us. And uh, you know, if you don't mind, you can call us on Monday. And this happened to be on a, on a Friday, um, Friday night. And, and I'm looking at him for a second and I'm looking around and I'm like, you know what? I, I, I'll call you directly Monday and, uh, I'd love to set up a time to talk to you. Um, but I just want to let you know that, uh, you probably think I'm Dwayne Johnson and, and, uh, I just want to let you know that I'm not, I'm not him. Oh, 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 Mr. Johnson. Listen, I, I, I know you're trying to be on the down low and you probably don't feel comfortable. I'm like, Oh, I feel comfortable calling you Monday, you know, especially we're talking 2 million. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, we'll be able to make a deal. So those kind of experiences and many, much, much more, um, I have coming out in, uh, in July, slated for July in a book, um, uh, based on challenges, trials, and tribulation, um, being compared to, um, to Dwayne, and the title of the book is called Stuck Between the Rock and a Hard Place. And uh, uh, Dwayne, please say it's okay. Because those photos are all mine that I'll be using. Uh, maybe one or two of uh, stock footage off of the internet, but uh, they're stock footages uh, that have been approved, so... But most of all this stuff is uh, my experiences that I've had, and in, including the photos that we took together. So um, please say it's okay, because it's my stories that I'm telling. It's not yours. Um, but yeah, so that, that book's coming out um, in July. We're just uh, finishing up on the editing process of it and making sure that um, legal um, that I have no issues. And so I've been working... You know, ironically, for the longest time, I think probably over 17, 18 years. And it's been held up for a long time. And um, 
I don't know if you know, uh, do you know who Satema? Um, yeah. Satema Gali? Yes. I went to BYU with him. We're classmates. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So I know, I definitely know who Satema. We used to dance together at Luau's and stuff. So yeah, I know who that guy is. <laughs> so, so let me tell you something about Satema. Just real quick. <laughs> and I mentioned okay. him in the very beginning of the book because that brother changed my mindset. He absolutely, um, as I started talking to him. So anyway, long story short, uh, the Attorney General of Utah, uh, Sean Ray, is is a good friend of mine. We actually we served together in Chicago, and uh, we got together. He came out to uh, to Las Vegas, and and uh, I work over at the LBCVA, the Las Vegas Pension uh, and Visitors Authority. And I work on the authority side. So when I uh, when I saw Sean, I was like, "Holy smokes!" You know, one of those uh, ghosts of Christmas past. And we started, you know, talking and hugging, and it was so so great catching up with him in sh in such a short time. And then he turns around and he goes, "Oh, by the way, um, um, I'm waiting for one more person, and these guys are they're they're going to a business meeting." Um, meeting with, uh, you know, big Daddy Warbucks kind of people. And then he goes, and uh, he goes, I'm just waiting for Satema. Do you know Satema? And I'm like, hmm? And I go, yeah, big, sexy, uh, you know, football player back in the day, Satema. And, and I'm like, yeah, of course, everyone knows Satema. And just then I turned and I look into the vast crowd, and, and I'm not even joking. There's maybe about 190,000 people on our property. 190,000. And just in this little corner that I was in working, it's like the sea parted. And here he comes walking through this, you know, 6'3", in shape, ball head, sexy of a, of a, you know, of a beast man. And... I'm looking at Satema and I'm like going, really? Don't come stand next to me, man. Don't stand next to me. <laughs> and uh, you're stealing my thunder. I don't want to be in your shadow. Can you please move over to your to your right a little bit? Um, and we started laughing. We, we were catching up. And when he talked to me, let me tell you, I said to myself, you know, this guy... He he became what I call the uh, the Samoan um, Jedi. He was using such words that I I couldn't even find in the dictionary. I'm like going, Shirley, wait, what's what's that word again? Hold, hold on a second. And I was just like. This guy's got me captivated, and just the questions he's asking me, and it had to do what do you, what would you like to accomplish? Like as a as a as a question he asked, what what do you like to accomplish this year? And this is right before COVID. And I said, well, I kind of been working on a book, and um, I guess I would like to finish that book. He goes, what's preventing you from? Well, um, you know, and this one of the last chapters that I'm working in. Uh, I'm actually going through some things for it to happen. Because why don't you bring that out in uh, your your second volume? Huh? Second? What? And I'm just like, I never even thought of that. And he goes, because the experiences that you have been going through may not be relative to today's uh, challenges, trials, and tribulation. And I'm like, huh? I didn't even think about that. So he gave me a lot to think about. And, and this was, again, right before COVID hit. So when COVID hit, obviously everything shut down, right? So I could not get anything back and forth as far as where I, that's when I started, was immediately after covid to push this book through and it wasn't after COVID, but it was during COVID, but on the tail end where they finally started to take, and it took a long process of getting back. But, 
but where are we at? So 2023, and that happened in 2020. And so we're talking a couple of years. Finally, um, just getting this finished up has been such a uh, a beast of uh, of of pushing it through. But you know what? I know for a fact that it is going to be relative because of all the issues that are going on in our lives today. It's it's all relative. And, you know, one of the the points that I love to make um, as a as a doctor in philosophy, I got a doctorate in, in honor, uh, as an honorable. Uh, and one of the things that and the mindset uh, that I started to see happening with my kids and experiencing this was anxiety, stress and depression disorder. And I started noticing that that was a, a lot with kids, period, but especially the Islanders. And I started to learn things that I've never learned before, and and especially my my daughter, who's who's twenty one now. Um, in twenty twenty, she basically hit me with, uh, you know, with with a uh, a defiant moment of us uh, coming to a collision in our talking to one another and as a as a father and you know at the time considering the fact that i'm an adult and you need to respect me um i totally did not see what she was talking to me about because she's like why do you think every time that we talk you always pull out the comparison experiences you know, if you talk, if if I talked that way to my parents, I'd be picking my teeth off of the floor. And why do you talk to me like that for, Dad? What does that have to do with me? And I just said, you know, I just want you to know where I'm coming from because that has nothing to do with me. I'm trying to tell you what's going on with me, but you don't understand that because you're trying to get me in the place where you want me to be, but I'm never going to get there because I've never experienced that. And when she said that, I'm like, you know, there's a chapter in my in in my book that I understand that because what's true for me may not be true for you, and vice versa. So when people have their own experiences, that becomes their truth. How do you expect somebody else that has never experienced that to believe the same thing you do? And that basically, like, wait a minute. I've never had these issues before. So I have no clue with what they're going through. And I'm telling them what? Be tough. You can handle it. It's like I had no tools to help my kids. And let me tell you, that was a moment that I basically said, this is a time where I needed to go out and started to do my due diligence. And that's what I did. And the the honoring doctorate that I that I had was from a mentor uh, whose name is Dr. Clyde Rivers. And Dr. Clyde Rivers is the is the global civility leader and ambassador. The global leader and ambassador of civility. So Civility is obviously a word that defies to treat others civil. Well, it also um, opens up a dialogue to where he started to teach, um, and I started to take his, his, his class of being able to what's called setting the table. <laughs>